Welcome to Mass Effect Advanced Nightbane Chronicles. This is an audio read of a fanfic based off of the Mass Effect game and the amazing Mass Effect tabletop RPG podcast known as Advanced. Characters, places, and the stories are built in the world of Mass Effect and the tabletop RPG Advantum progress. Spoilers will be revealed for both the Mass Effect games as well as the podcast currently airing once a month. Be sure to follow the Advantum crew as they journey through the Milky Way galaxy and beyond on your favorite podcast platform. Like and rate this audio read as well as the Advantum tabletop RPG this fanfic is based off of. This audio read is a product of JATF Productions. Warning, please be advised that this audiobook has music and sound effects throughout each episode. Thank you and enjoy. This is Viper, recalling the time I got a call from a ghost during a mission on Sicario Station. Needless to say, our plans had to change in order for us to catch the demon. I slowly stood out of my sleep to hear my Omnitool beeping. I was receiving a hollow call. I didn't recognize who the caller was, and at the moment, my armor was off. Luckily, my gear was right next to me as I removed my entire wear for a more comfortable rest while we traveled. Once I snapped my helmet on, I took the call. To my surprise, no one presented themselves. It was like they turned off the viewing portion of this hollow call. Speak! I don't have time for games! I finally uttered as I waited for a voice to come through. I see. Krala has abandoned you and is put to the death. Perhaps it is afraid of you. As you seem to be something of a demon yourself. I know for that. You're no guiding spirit. Clearly, they were masking their voice. Not very well, might I add. These words from this anonymous speaker baffled me. They were speaking to me as if they knew I was in a sorry. If I didn't spend the amount of time I did with my mother, I would be at a loss here. I'm speechless. Go on. I replied with annoyance. I knew this wasn't something to breeze on by, but I had little tolerance for theatrics. I needed them to get to the point before we arrived on Sicario Station. I can understand why you might seem cold and distant. I believe you warm up to me when I say that I'm glad you survived the attack from Sodom. My heart beats loudly within my chest as I felt an overwhelming heat rise within me. I held my tongue as I thought about my words very carefully. Two questions. What do you want this time? And how did you find me? Well, let me ask you this. What are you willing to do in order to keep me silent? Blackmail! They're pulling the same card as they did last time. Literally, the same old card that hasn't changed over several years ago. The information on my wicked deeds is the hand they're willing to play in order to use me again. Huh. I grow tired of this. Save your threats, Krella. You can just tell me what you want from me. You don't need to resort to blackmail anymore. I was grateful for the opportunity that was presented to me. I would have said yes, regardless of your threats. Threats? Oh my! Apologies, my dear Titan. I am but a humble Valyrian priest. I have nothing but high praise for your work. That was why I offered you the job of silence. The silence I speak of is your balance act between two factions. One being the Jealous Collective, and the other being Cerberus. Who the hell are you? Enough for this game, demon! I nearly shouted as I tried to keep my aggression at bay, so the others wouldn't hear and intrude on my conversation. The Kurala must have been shocked or afraid of my shouting. It remained silent which allowed me to properly analyze 
the words they spoke before I shouted. We not only know Asari background and religion, but also Turian. The eleven priests were persons noted in the ancient Turian era. I wondered if they used such an analogy to show their intelligence, or if it was a purposeful notion to make me realize they also know I am part Turian. My, my, my Listen to me! I am very busy, as you yourself have noted! So if you would please get on with it and tell me what your offer is! That way, we can move on and be done with this conversation! Oh! So you're willing to cross over to my side and stay with me? Well, that is all I wanted to hear! Yes, it's Cerberus and the Collective, and come be by my side! As I said, I'm about to tell this person and only the priests return to the Titans. I blinked a few times in disbelief. All they wanted was for me to work for them. This whole charade was just another job offer. I thought about it for a while. Perhaps more than I should have as the mysterious speaker thought I disconnected the call. Hello? Are you still there? Tell me something. How did you escape Sidon? From what I recall, I was the only one, and no one was supposed to know I survived. Well, you weren't. Kamala tried to get me to this guy in Blitz. And then again, I saw him. You're not the only one who has friends. You're not the only one who can avoid the misfortune of Kamala. Apparently, you're my Kamala. So that is what I'll call you. I doubt I'll ever get your real name or identity. Maybe someday, Kamala. I believe that name suits you better. You can call me the Luvian, for what is the priest without their fighting to admire. I've sent you the coordinates of a meeting place on Scario Station. See you soon. The hover call ended as I sighed. I felt like I was holding my breath the entire time. I sat back down for a moment as I finished putting on the bottom half of my Viper armor. I then headed out to my quarters to find Lupius. It didn't take long as we almost ran into each other as we made our way to the mess hall. Is everything okay? You seem to be... He paused for a moment as he stared into my eyes and started to pull the information right out of my mind. The connection we have through our little accident allows him to gather some information. But my takeaway from doing this is far greater than his. We can share secrets but never keep them from each other. Huh. <sighs> Must have been the right nerve that person touched to make you shout like that. A ghost trying to come back and haunt me is what the conversation was about. I replied as I crossed my arms with the millions. He could have just let me tell the story instead of pulling it out of my mind. What do you need me to do then? I need you to trace the call I just had and give me an exact location of the person once we touch down on the station. Needless to say, you will be joining me for a bit before you head off on your own mission. Won't they recognize us? Mainly you? From what I've gathered, they've kept their eyes on you. They might know of your more recent endeavors. Precisely! They know of Viper and my handiwork. For this matter, I'll be going as Venom. Obviously, they know I work for Venom, and so do you. We'll travel together and split up. Once we do, we'll stay on comms and you'll help me track down this person. They seem so eager to meet me, they'll ignore the presence of the rest of the team. They'll assume I would want to meet them alone, so seeing everyone else on the team but me will ease them down as they wait for my arrival. Once we split up, I'll start hacking the residual feed they left behind from the call you just had. From what I gathered so far, they made the call from the station. We must have recently gotten within range for their equipment since we've gotten closer to the station. This helps identify the type of tool and program they are using. Impressive! Simply impressive! It seems like we have our hunting plan in order. Let's catch ourselves a demon! Once we landed on the station, we informed Grex of the plan. He agreed and we headed out to find this person. Lupius quickly discovered that they were currently at a club called Rusty Buckets. We made our way there and entered slowly as we began to survey the area. According to the trail they left, this person is an Asari by the name of Anun. 
Anon Johnsini. Hey, it's the famous Asari who- Not important, Grex. Find her and bring her to me. I spoke as the Venom Helmet altered my speech. Wait. Lupius suddenly stopped as he kept typing away on his Omni tool. Apparently, she is at two places at once. Her room is being billed from a buffet not too far from here. However, her Omni tool signal indicates that she is in this club. I continued to scan the scene as he explained the situation. Between the loud music and the overwhelming bodies within this club, my mind was spinning. Uh, do we split up? Grex questioned, more like suggested, as he was ready to leave this place it seemed. Before I can respond, my eyes finally caught something unusual. And Asari was arguing with the Salarian. During my call with this mystery person, I came to the conclusion that the person speaking to me was trying to sound as intelligent as a Salarian, or that they actually were one. I now in my search field. According to my scans, the person is right in front of us. Three o'clock. Here, I'll ping their Omni 2 with an encrypted message. Once he finished typing and sent the message, the Salarian seemed to have lost the argument as his Omni tool beeped a strange and loud sound. He frantically typed on his Omni tool with frustration as the Asari took his distraction as a chance to leave. Stop the Asari. Gather whatever information you can, then report back to me. I'll deal with our Kurala. I'm on it. Correct. Did you get a location of our pilot? Yeah, I've been in contact with him for a couple of days now. Conveniently, he wanted to meet him, so I'm right where I need to be, although I'm a bit early. Enjoy yourself while you wait for your target. Once your mission is done, report back to the ship. I didn't wait for a reply as I made my way towards the Salarian. He finally got his army tool to function right as he continued to look around and apologize to those that were around him. It didn't take long for him to spot me. After all, I was wearing a very large Krogan suit with a Turian helmet that was painted as if venom was dripping down the side. His eyes widened the moment he realized who I was. I never thought I'd see Salarian's eyes grow bigger than what they already are. Of course, he tried to run. This didn't work in his favor as the amount of people that managed to trip him up caused him to fall flat on his face. I calmly grabbed him by the back of his long coat and carried him towards the exit as he flailed about. No one aided him when he pleaded for help to those we passed on by. Once the door slid open, I chucked him against the wall and watched him splat his back against the floor. I lifted him up with one hand and pulled out my shotgun. Shh. Don't make a scene or you will be a bloody mess on the wall. He frantically nodded his head as he held his arms up. Viper sent me to collect you. She didn't say to let you live. However, I don't make a habit of bringing my bounties dead. So, we'll play a question game and see if you can keep your entire body intact. Think you can handle that? He immediately shook his head yes, and I slowly set him down and put my shotgun away as I took a step back to give him some breathing room. <laughs> Thank you for not killing me right away. I was hoping to speak to Laetona. It's Viper, you little bug. Don't ever call her that again. Got it? Once again, he replied by rapidly nodding his head. Now, first question. Who are you? He paused for a moment as he looked around. It seemed like he didn't want to give me his name. Kerala, yes. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Kerala. Or, rather, Leiton, um... Sorry. Viper would know me as Kerala. I screamed within my mind. He was assuming that Venom wouldn't know much about my past. Fine. I'll have to play his game. For now. I see. How long have you and Viper known each other? Actually, Viper doesn't know me at all. Tell me, what do you know about Viper? Before she became a member of the Blue Suns. I know a lot about her. Who the hell do you think kept her safe the entire time she was with the group? Huh. That wasn't in his notes. I'm sorry. But from what I've collected, you are a member of the Eclipse Gang. Nothing- I work for no one but myself. I've been used as a bounty hunter for 
for both factions. Many factions, in fact. My name rings throughout the galaxy. Let me ask you this, little bug. Do you know who I am? Of course. Yes, yes, of course. You're the famous Venom Krantor. My father has outstanding notes and reports. Your father? Who the hell is your father? Well, let me respond to this question by answering your other question. I don't know Viper personally, nor does she know me. My father knows her, according to his notes and his research. I'm not sure if she knows who he is, as his notes never stated this. He was the one to offer her a job of sorts. The Saren job! I'm aware of her part in it all, and how she escaped before the attack started. I'm curious to know how your father escaped, seeing as you aren't the original mysterious person that offered the job. Well, that is the thing. He didn't. He paused for a moment, as a sense of grief came over him for a second. It was a very short second as he perked up again and continued his speech. I am an extension of his work and research. When I came across Viper's file, I became just as devoted to her as my father. She is a wonderful- What makes Viper so special to you and your father? My dear friend, she is the key to the failed shadow project the Turians gave up on during their earlier trials of the project. From what I've gathered, the Alliance and Cerberus are searching for the missing key but haven't a clue on where to look. Intel suggests that Cerberus has found something and halted their search for this key. Maybe another key was presented. The solo survivor of the project who is presumed dead. We, on the other hand... Who the hell is this we you're speaking of? I can't really divulge that information. Tell me or die. I put up my shotgun again and pressed it against his stomach as I pinned him against the wall. Even though you're skinny, you have enough flesh on you to look for the sound of the shot. The Salarian swallowed hard as he weighed his options. Alright, alright, alright. Just put that away before you attract too much attention to us. He softly spoke as he looked around to ensure no one was watching us. The station was too busy and buzzing with holiday and vacation vibes. Who cares what we were doing? I'm part of the League of One. Well, trying to be is more of an accurate statement. My father was aligned with them, thus the untimely death. But he passed everything off to me, and I intend to continue his research. Having Viper aid my cause will strengthen my odds of joining the presumed dead group. So, Viper is just a meal ticket then? No, 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 not at all. She is more than that. She is, well, a goddess, if I may be so direct. I would follow her to the ends of the galaxy if she was for it. Then why don't you do that? Um, I'm sorry. Run that by me one more time, please. Why don't you follow your goddess around and serve her as she ventures off into the new galaxy? Uh, I'm... I'm sorry. Did you just did you just say a new galaxy? She has a way to travel to another completely different galaxy. Before I could reply, my Omni tool pings as if I was receiving a call. I answered it and heard Lupius breathing a bit heavily. <sighs> Mission accomplished. I'm heading back to the ship. Lupius, are you alright? You sound short of breath. <sighs> I'm fine. Nothing I couldn't handle. Just a little sparring match with a forger. I see. Why don't you come back to the club we split away from? I need you to escort someone back to the ship. They are requesting an audience with Viper. Affirmative. Tell them to wait for me within the club. You can leave everything to me and Viper as you finish your mission. We'll all meet up at the ship. Hopefully, Grex will be done with his mission as well. Copy that. Venom out. I switched off the call and stared at the Salarian as I smirked within my helmet. Thankfully, Lupius played along with my plan to ensure that Venom and Viper remained as separate people. Have you ever heard of the Jealous Collective? Rumors. Just rumors. They buzzed around the Citadel for a while. Apparently they were trying to request aid from the Council. Obviously the Council declined. Other than that, I'm told they are somewhat of a popular human reference to Robin Hood. Or maybe even current as they seem to hunt and operate in the shadows. They are thieves, kidnappers, assassins, smugglers, traitors, and everything in between. However, no one has really seen any fruits of their labor, so to speak. In other words, you have heard of them, but everything you've heard wasn't too inviting. On the contrary, Venom. Everything I've heard intrigued me. Had it not been so busy keeping tabs on Viper, I would have investigated the Gems Collective a while ago. Well, you must not have been keeping close watch of Viper. Turns out, we work for the Gems Collective. That is why we're here. You knew this, though. You knew we were coming here. So why lie? I knew you were coming here, I just didn't know what for. 
I arrived here earlier than expected. By my calculations, you and your team were supposed to arrive about a week ago. I take it something delayed your- Enough or... talking, little bug. I have a lot of work to be done here, and the time I'm spending talking to you is preventing me from getting my task done. Stay here, and wait until Lupius arrives and escorts you to our ship. You better be waiting here, or you will be left behind. I'm not just talking about this station. I'm talking about the opportunity to leave this galaxy. Right, copy that, as you would say. I'll stay put, and maybe grab a few drinks while I wait. It was a pleasure to converse with you, Venom. The Salarian nodded and walked back into the club. The bouncers stopped him and looked towards me to see if it was okay for him to come back into the club. I simply nodded my head and walked off. I heard the bouncer make a comment about how lucky the Salarian was. Something about surviving an encounter with Venom is good fortune. Once I was far enough from the club, I pinged Lupius on my Omnitool. He quickly answered before I can speak first. I see you have a new friend. More like a stalker. Well, the son of a stalker. It doesn't matter, I need you to complete my mission for me. I was tasked to collect schematics and algorithms from the casino. I was told to act politely, but I believe stealing them would be better in our favor. You are the best one of our team as far as hacking goes. So do me a little favor and get those items while I head back to the ship and switch into a Viper armor. On it. I'll accomplish this first before meeting with the Salarian and bring them back to the ship. Perfect. I'll see you soon then. I closed the call and headed back towards the ship. My mind was racing with the amount of detail and information I obtained during my conversation with the Salarian. I'll have to extract more from them once I'm Viper again. Honestly, my biggest dilemma right now is what should I do after I've obtained all that I desired from them? Do I let them join us or kill them anyways like I originally planned? This was indeed a tough decision. Nightbane Chronicles Character Trivia Time In this episode, they talk about Latona's wicked deeds. After the first contact war, Latona was interested in humans. She used her consort business as a means to experiment on and study humans. She continued this when she lived in Eslam and was then hired through blackmail to work on Sodom. Thank you for listening to the Mass Effect Advantum Night Bane Chronicles. Be sure to find and listen to the Mass Effect Advantum Tabletop RPG. Also, join the Mass Effect Advantum Discord for more updates on this audio read, as well as the Tabletop RPG Advantum. Thanks for listening in.